Hello, my wonderful, beautiful friends, guys. Welcome back to our slash entitled people, where Karens keep calling 911 on others for the dumbest reasons ever. And in this episode, a Karen regrets it so much, guys, when she calls the cops on OP and it backfires. I hope you enjoy the stories today. Don't shake your heads too hard. And as always, you can send or link your post to this email right here. So here is some backstory. I'm a young female with POTS, that stands for Postural Orthostatic Tachycardia Syndrome. From the outside, I look like any other woman around my age. However, this has caused many encounters with entitled people when I use accessible seats, bathrooms, parking spots, etc. So I made this little alert badge that says I have an invisible disability, called POTS. But of course, a Karen won't care. On this day, I was looking for a parking spot at a grocery store, and I saw someone pull into an accessible spot without putting up their placard. I'm thinking, no problem, it happens. In fact, two out of three times, it just turns out they forgot and they're grateful that I reminded them. This entitled Karen was that one out of three. I parked in the accessible spot right next to Karen and say, excuse me, I think you forgot to put up your placard. The woman just glares at me while picking up her child. Her kid's about three years old, and she says, It's none of your business. Go away. I say to her, I just don't want you to get a ticket. The fine is $250. Karen then looks at me and says, Well, do you have a placard? You look perfectly healthy. So I resort to my usual response. I say to her, Not everyone has a visible disability. I motion towards my badge, and the woman doesn't listen. She says to me, How do I know that's not your grandma's permit? Young kids like you think you're so privileged and entitled to everything. And yes, she actually said it like that. And I'm thinking, yeah, I'm so privileged to have expensive hospital bills, a heart rate of 130 plus every time I stand up, failure of my autonomic nervous system, and getting judged by entitled people who think they're the handicap police. So I guess the yelling from the Karen attracts attention because one of the store employees comes over after hearing the commotion, and he brings a police officer. And that's when Karen panics and she tries to run inside the store. The police officer says to her, Excuse me, do you have a handicap permit? Karen says, Well, no, but I have a child who uses a stroller. Then she glances at my alert badge and she quickly says, Wait, uh, I mean, I actually have a disability, but I forgot my placard at home. I'm actually feeling a little... She then proceeds to slowly fall backwards onto her knees and then hips and then back with her hand over her forehead. She then immediately stands up and says, See, I have pots. I just fainted. Hearing her say that, I'm laughing at this point because 1. Fainting doesn't look like that, and 2. Standing up that quickly would probably cause a person with POTS to pass out again. And by the way, POTS isn't just about fainting when you stand up for too long. Less than half of people with it faint regularly, and I've only fainted a few times since I was diagnosed. The police officer then quickly writes a ticket for her, and then he leaves. Now I'm hoping her child won't grow up to be like her. Guys, I am so glad that Entitled Karen got instant karma, guys. And the pathetic attempt at fake fainting and stealing OP's disability to get out of a ticket, oh my goodness, the things some people will do to get out of trouble, right? And while we're on the topic of Karens accusing others of being huge fakers, this next person shares their experience. This is important. I have a bone condition. I have hip dysplasia, and my thigh bones are slightly shifted. This causes me to walk with my feet turned inwards. Now, I always try to walk normally, but when I'm tired or exhausted, I don't give a damn anymore, and I walk how my condition forces me to. Also, after walking long distances, my hips and knees hurt pretty badly, so I don't walk normally. Anyways, on to the story. So on this day, I was taking a walk around the nearby lake I live at. I wasn't particularly tired, but my knees and hips started to hurt from walking a long distance, so I stopped walking normally. As I walked past the playground, I heard a loud gasp. And then all of a sudden, a Karen marches towards me with a red face, and she proceeds to yell at me saying, Stop walking like that! You're traumatizing my child! I politely try to explain that I have a bone condition and that I'm in pain and I can't walk normally, but she didn't want to hear any of that. The woman starts yelling at me saying, You're probably faking it to get attention. This is a park and kids will copy what others do, so walk straight. 
The woman then proceeds to kick my feet into the correct position, and I took a few steps back and yelled, Lady, what the hell do you think you're doing? I'll call the police on you if you try to do that again. She then grinned smugly and said, No, I'm gonna call the cops on you for faking a disease and trying to traumatize the kids at this playground. Her daughter was playing the whole time and didn't even look over to us until we got louder. That's when her daughter notices the commotion, waddles over to us, and tugs on her mom's shirt and asks her to come and leave me alone. The woman then turned to her and said in the sweetest voice, Go back to the playground, dear. I'm only having a talk with this young lady. She needs to learn some manners. At that, I sighed, and I started to walk away, and she screamed, Where do you think you're going? I told her I'm going home. Now I know the woman wanted to follow me, but her kid was playing there. That girl was probably 7 or 8, but she had more common sense than her mother. Honestly, most kids in the stories I read do have more common sense than their parents, guys. And it just boggles my mind how some people just have to say something. Like, instead of letting OP walk past the playground, which probably can't take more than 30 seconds, the Karen decides to scream at her and attract attention. Like, I'm pretty sure no kids at the playground are paying attention to anything other than running around and playing Karen, so relax. This is a weird situation. Technically, the person involved isn't a neighbor per se, but she's pretty close, and she's definitely making me feel like she's from hell. So a couple of years ago, my wife and I bought a house from a person named Pearl. Not her real name. Pearl and her husband moved across the country for her husband's job. It's a beautiful house, and they put a lot of work into fixing it up. Everything was going okay for a while. Pearl would message us now and then, and ask about how things are going, if we enjoyed the house, etc. At one point, she asked if she could see the house, next time she was in our part of the country visiting family or something, to show some friends what it looked like with their renovations. We thought it was odd, but we would have allowed it. She never did end up visiting, so nothing came of it, and that was just the beginning of some weird crap. Almost a year ago, someone accidentally used our address to list their home on Zillow. It was a simple error, instead of using N instead of S on the same road. Anyways, I guess Pearl's husband saw the listing and got excited that we were selling the house. We know this because Pearl messages us asking about the house and if we're selling. We told her no, we weren't the ones who listed it. And Pearl continues to send us messages such as, Oh, that's too bad, my husband got really excited about maybe moving back to that house because we love it so much and life on this side of the country isn't as good as we thought it would be. Stuff like that. Eventually, she stops messaging us. The next thing we know, a couple of months later, we find out that Pearl and her family have moved back into town, but they're staying at a rental. She then starts messaging us, asking what price we would like to sell them the house at. We give them an amount that's a fair price, according to the housing market, and Pearl says that's out of their budget, and she can't justify paying that mixed with a few comments about how they cut us a deal when they sold us the house and whatnot, and that we should just give it back to her for the price we paid. I didn't respond, and she goes radio silent for a while. But cut to two weeks ago. Due to some financial hardships, my wife and I are forced to put up our house for sale. We list the house, and of course, Pearl sees the listing. She makes a few comments about wanting to move into the house again, and how the price is so much higher than what we paid her. We kindly let her know that this is asking price, and if she's interested, she can make an offer through a realtor. She then starts making passive-aggressive comments on this community Facebook page, saying how she misses her old house. Now we have someone interested in buying the house, and he's put forward an offer. We're waiting for funding and inspections to come through, and who messages us last night? It was Pearl. She comments saying how we get to enjoy the renovations longer than she did, and other stuff to make us feel sorry for her. She then asked if we're under contract. We tell her that we are. She asked, with who? We say that it's not anyone we know personally, and we don't feel like disclosing that. She then asked how much they offered, and we tell her we got a fair offer, and she keeps pushing. We let her know that we're not comfortable letting her know. She's gone silent for now, but I'm sure we'll hear something from her again real soon. Maybe once the house is sold. She's just so annoying. Now I get being attached to a house, but this is becoming borderline harassment. Yeah, I have no idea why OP even kept replying to her text. I would have just left her unread or blocked her phone number and social media, guys. Like, why go through all that headache when OP owes her absolutely nothing? Like, it's so entitled to harass OP saying, I want to move back into the house I sold to you for the price I sold it to you at. Now give it to me. 
A little bit about me is I have several rescued Dobermans, but the two needed for this story are Queen, who's severely abused and is now aggressive and super anxious, and Duke, who's my service dog for PTSD. So because Queen is so aggressive, whenever she goes outside, she has to wear a muzzle and she's leashed to me just to make sure she doesn't bolt. Helping her has honestly helped me a lot, and Duke is also fairly protective of us both. Because of this, we do get stares and whispers sometimes, but most people in my neighborhood know about Queen now. Except for Karen and her kid. So one day, her kid's walking home from school, and he reaches his hand through our chain link fence holes to pet some of my other dogs. Now because this is trespassing, Queen automatically gets aggressive and tries to lunge. Thankfully, she's a smaller Doberman, and I'm able to stop her, and just quickly wave before bringing her inside. I then come back outside and say hi, sorry about her, she was just scared. The kid nods and asked why she was scared, so I explained that the old owners were really mean and scary. I said it's like when you watch a scary movie and you're still scared even after the movie ends. She's just trying to calm down, but she's taking a while. I then grab one of my dogs, who's good with kids, and bring him out to be petted by the kid. And then we talk about how to properly approach dogs and to not stick our hands through other people's fences. So with that, the kid leaves, and I think we're done. I bring my dogs inside, give Queen her anti-anxiety medication before one more potty break before bed. While I'm outside, the kid is standing a bit away, while a woman, the Karen of the story, is leaning against my fence and calling out, Hey! Hey! You! Come here! Now because Queen was doing pretty good and seemed fairly unbothered, I just walked closer but left several feet between me and the fence, before giving a treat to Queen, asking what she needed. And here's the conversation. Karen says, My son says you're abusing this dog, pointing to Queen. You need to give her to me right now and the rest of your dogs before I call the police on you for animal abuse. I respond, I'm sorry, but I'm not giving you my dogs. You can call the police, but these are my dogs. Now I honestly thought she was bluffing, and this is when the woman starts screaming, Hand them over right now, or I'm calling the cops. At this point, Queen doesn't lunge, since nobody's come onto our territory yet. But she did start to press against my leg, and she was shaking so hard, I could see it. This is what she does before a breakdown, as I call them, where she basically goes blind and she'll attack anyone, including me and my other dogs. She hasn't done this in over a year, so I didn't take much notice. Thankfully, Duke did. The woman kept screaming, while Duke body blocked us both. He was trying to lean against Queen for some pressure therapy, and keeping his eyes on the Karen. He was trained to do this, so I could feel safe enough to take my eyes off other people, but it can be unnerving, I understand that. Now, Karen apparently thought this was an attack stance, and she whips out her phone and she calls 911, saying something along the lines of an aggressive dog was attacking her and her son. I sent my dogs who actually listen inside, while I stayed put, afraid that the woman would climb my fence and get herself hurt. Queen was still heavily shaking, and when I crouched down and tried to pet her to calm her down, she snapped at me. I stumbled back, landed on my butt, and Queen had her hackles raised, looking blankly ahead. I tried to talk calmly and softly, but Karen still screaming, now saying to the operator how I was being attacked and to please hurry. The rest was a mess. The police arrived, and I basically had to cover Queen while she struggled and mashed her muzzle into me, trying to bite me, to make sure they wouldn't do anything. At the same time, I also cried, which freaked Duke out as he ran around us in circles trying to figure out what to do. Eventually, the police told me to bring my dogs inside and to come outside and talk. Duke refused to leave my side, so I put his harness on, and I brought his papers for proof, just in case. I was able to produce Queen's papers, and even called my vet for proof that she's a scared dog, not an aggressive dog, and my vet even explained some of her treatment plan to the police. By the end of it, myself, Queen, and I'm pretty sure Duke as well, not to mention my other dogs, were all so emotionally drained that we just went to bed. I called in late to work for the next day. Several of my neighbors have also told me that they gave their own statements to the police about my dogs and Queen. And thankfully we had a few security cameras that can sort of view my yard and the police have since dropped the case. I saw the kid again today, which is why I thought of the story. The kid slid a note under my fence that said sorry, with a few drawings of my dogs and me. It was very cute and sweet. I hope he's okay though, he looked really scared when I more or less flung myself over Queen when she had a mental breakdown. What an unfortunate encounter guys, and I feel so bad for OP for having to go through that. 
And I only wish I could see the footage because reading this story had my jaw on the floor. Like, guys, I was so shocked that it escalated that fast and the woman was so quick to call the cops before knowing the whole story. So if he does come back with an edit that says, can people please stop telling me to sue or send her to jail, etc. I'm glad you're all worried, but personally, I don't want to. The police already seem to be dealing with her for misuse of 911 resources and lying to police officers, and I don't want to deal with it at all. If she does something again, then yes, I will take action because it means I've become a target. But right now, I'm not a target, and it'll just add stress to everybody involved, including Queen and my other dogs. Alright, so I'm a 23 year old nanny and I've posted entitled parent stories from that job. But I also hold another position as a cashier and I finally have one from this job. So I work as a cashier at a 24 hour grocery store. It was a busy Saturday afternoon just a few days ago and we were packed to the point that the lines wrapped around the aisles so it's loud, busy, packed and hot. I'm tired and I see that it's only 30 minutes until my shift ends. Briefly to my side, I can hear a kid yell, and he looks around three years old. Not like tantrum yelling, but just angry, trying to get mom's attention. I ignore him because kids having tantrums or getting angry is normal. I start talking to the lady in front of me, and I hear the kid, who was by the way actually quite sweet. He yells again for mom, saying, Mom, I want my juice. He was now yelling, but it was no way close to a tantrum or a fit. His family was the next in line. And frankly, if he'd been in a different line, I probably wouldn't have noticed at all. In my opinion, he was more like getting mom's attention, and his mom, the entitled Karen, just snaps. The woman turns around, grabs him by his shoulders, getting nose to nose, and she screams as she's shaking him back and forth, You will not behave like this, you brat. I'm so tired of this. If you do not stop, you'll get a beating when we get home. Hearing that, I was shocked, and so was everyone around. The woman did not say punishment, she didn't say spanking, she said beating. Now, I was about to tell the lady in front of me to excuse me while I talked to the mom, but she jumped in so fast, she goes up to the Karen and says, How dare you talk to your son like that? He's a child, and you should never put your hands on him or threaten him. I was proud the lady said something, but I still paged for a manager in the process because I had a feeling this would go bad. The Karen starts yelling back that she has the right to do whatever she wants to her son. She could spank, she could beat, she could yell as she sees fit, and there's not a damn thing anyone here can do about it. And this is the point that I jump on verbally, and I said, Ma'am, I need you to take yourself and leave the store. Your children and husband, who by the way did nothing during this, can check out, but you need to leave. And the Karen yells, Excuse me? I say to her, You need to leave. We do not tolerate abuse, children or other customers. You have some of both by screaming at this woman. I then turned to the other woman. As much as I didn't want to, I had to say, Ma'am, I appreciate your concern, but let us handle this. The woman wasn't mad. She stepped away to bag her things, and I turned back to the mom, and she's losing it. She screams, You can't do that. I have the right to shop here. I demand to see a manager, blah, blah, blah. She reaches a pitch that only dogs could hear. At this point, my awesome manager shows up and says, OP, what's going on? Before I can speak up, the Karen speaks up and says, This bitch won't let me check out because she doesn't like how I discipline my child. I start saying, That's not true. What happened was... And before I could finish, he spoke up and said, Ma'am, we do not tolerate being called any sort of names in this store. I need you to be quiet so I can hear from both of you. He then turns to me. I rattle off the story and his eyes widen. Mind you, it's a busy day and other customers are around listening and three to four people jump in to defend me. He then turns to the lady and her family and say, Ma'am, I need you to leave the store. Your family can finish checking out, but you need to leave. If you don't, I'll call police. Frankly, you'll be lucky if I don't do that anyway with the threats you made. She tries to stand up for herself, but my manager just escorts her out. The family just follow her, without their food. You'd think that was the end, but nope. About 15-ish minutes later, after I fill out a report explaining everything, I head outside to get to my car to head home. I'm on the phone with a friend, trying to explain what just happened, but as I walked outside, I see a police car outside. 
no lights, just outside. Now I thought it was weird because I didn't see anyone get caught shoplifting that day. So I shrug and move on, and as I reach my car, I hear it. I hear, that's the girl, officer. She's the one who assaulted me and refused to let me shop here. I turn, and I see the woman from earlier with her kid, her husband, and two cops. I couldn't help but laugh and say, are you serious, lady? My friend's trying to talk to me, but the police officer says, Ma'am, can you come here so I can get your side and settle this? I tell my friend that I'll call her back and go talk to the officer. He keeps me away from Karen, but I can still see and hear her. I briefly explain what happened. I told him that I believed what she was doing to her son was abusive, and that it's not okay. The cop then asks for specifics, and I tell him what I saw and heard her threaten. But before the cop can say anything, the Karen yells, I'm his mother. I can discipline as I see fit. I can beat him if I want. Again, I'm wide-eyed with her wording, still using beating, not spanking, and the cop looks just as shocked. I then say to him, if you'd like, my manager's inside, his name is so-and-so, and he can show you the cameras, and the store actually has microphones so you can hear what she says. I will admit that I refused service, and I called her abusive, but that's it, I never touched her, officer. Hearing me say that, Karen yells, See, she admits to verbally assaulting me and refusing me service, because of who I am, arrest her. The cop sighs, looks at his partner, and nods. He then looks at me and says, Okay, you can go. I'm going to give you this card with an email. You can send your statement about what happened. The cop then turns to Karen, and I see the other cop has his hand on her, saying something to her. I'm assuming she was being arrested or investigated, because she then shouted, No, I won't be going anywhere with you. I did nothing wrong. She should be charged, not me. She then tries to leave, and one cop stopped her. She instantly backs down and goes inside with one of the officers, and the other stays with the kid and husband, who hasn't said anything throughout this, he's just looking at the ground. With that, I shrugged, got back inside my car, and called my friend back to tell her what happened. When I got back to work on Saturday, I asked my manager what happened. He said he showed the video and made a report. Mom got arrested and we were told that CPS might be getting involved, but more than likely. I really hope the dad is a good parent and she's the only abusive one. I hope those kids get a better life and I hope that poor boy knows he did nothing wrong. Yeah, I don't think the dad is abusive at all, guys, because it seems to me like Karen runs that household. I mean, staring at the ground the whole time, saying absolutely nothing, while your wife is going nutso on police and a random person, yeah, that's signs that he's a beaten man. But what a mistake that was, right? Calling the cops on someone and having it backfire to the point where she got arrested. And that, my friends, brings us to another end of our slash entitled people. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's stories. If you did, hit that thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed, consider subscribing so you don't miss these crazy stories. And if you missed yesterday's episode on the channel, it's another r slash entitled people, where a Karen is sick and tired of her daughter and she just throws her away. Guys, it's such a wild story, so go check it out. And myself and Stevie Boy will see you guys in the next one. We love you.